and this is how I made it. Hello, I'm Gregory Danes and I am an artist and illustrator at Circa 1990 and I produce very intricate paper cuts. This particular model I have used to produce a small gallery which I'm able to showcase some of my paper cuts. Uh, a lot of my paper cuts start off as sort of architectural forms. So being able to start off with something which is small and then give it mass and volume by changing the size of the gallery space it's in allowed me to produce something much more unusual and um, almost tactile. It fools the eye into thinking that this is a large piece of plaster work rather than what is actually about 12 by 12 centimetres. So I created these in Adobe Illustrator and then have cut it over with the Cricut workspace. These are then assembled onto A3 foam board, which gives it the rigidity for the space of the room. And I also use a, um, a glue called Yuhu glue, as it gives good stability um, on the paper, especially if you end up folding it at any point, it kind of tends to keep it quite rigid. The most delicate elements of my paper cuts tend to be no thicker than um, two millimetres across. Sometimes I come into about one millimetre, but I do find that I end up getting quite a high failure rate if they are too narrow. I th the blade will move and it will cut or it will tear. Um, and it doesn't, also I've always got to consider gluing things together because when it's too delicate, as you're probably seeing here, trying to transfer a wobbly piece of very thin, like netting, almost paper, doesn't really work. So you know you have to stick out a more rigid piece over the top um, and then you're able that gives it the support when you pick it up as soon as you bring it into the 3d space it flexes but whilst it's on a surface it's flat and then layering these things gets the effect so what i'm trying to produce here is the idea of a sort of carved woodwork bringing these elements of carved wood will make it come together as a a, a single piece of carpentry um, here I'm cutting some foam which is going to give me a depth um, of, uh, of thickness in the windows. I did think about initially mounting the windows inside the, the, the frames, but if you look at these sort of old Georgian buildings, they are set out, you, so you get a window sill and a ledge. So this gives me a, a depth with which to set the window back in. Um, and because of this is then coated in paper, it doesn't have to be exactly formed to the space. When the item is formed in the space, you get the depth and you get the illusion of it being an inzent window. So these are then glued on the outside of the wall. Uh, this goes out into like, this would be like into the thickness of an actual wall if it was a real building. And then I'm now building the coving space or the um, the sort of the, the, the inset window itself. Uh, again, using this sort of layering technique where I have a lighter paper and the, the finer paper goes on the inside and then layer the board on the back. And then this goes onto the outside. And again, as you can see here, I don't need to curve, curve the perfect arch because I know the paper itself will want to lend itself to the sort of path of least resistance, so it will give me an arch inside it without having to sort of block out a complicated system. I then want a way of mounting the window. So I've cut a piece of paper which can sit on the furthest end of the piece. And then I can send, sit the actual wall piece on top of the window. Obviously this isn't how you would do it in real life, but for the model, this is what I find works best. Here I'm layering the framework of the window and the inside wall over the uh, A3 paper. Next, we're doing the roof. I quite, this is like from a, one of my original designs, uh, made into a sort of more Gothic wood piece, if you can imagine a sort of natural trust property. If you look up at the ceiling, sometimes they have these really intricate carved ceilings, um, which, you know, when craftsmanship was very cheap, this was very desirable. Now, of course, you have foam tiles or flat plaster or maybe some horrible artex. But for this, I kind of had that kind of stunning 
Georgian wow factor of a room. So there it is, there's my design put together. Um, and when it's sitting up, you'll see lots of light and you can see the room and that kind of throws the illusion. So I find put, turning the piece down would allow me to put paper in, get the light into the room, um, but it also gives a much more of a, a real theme, a sense of realism. I hope you found this useful and you found it informative and enjoyed actually the process of do it, of me creating these paper cuts. Um, if you want to look at any of my other videos, then feel free. I've got plenty of paper cuts, printmaking, lino prints, that sort of thing. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, you watched it this far, then of course, please, I ask you if you'd like to give it a thumbs up, uh, leave any comments or questions in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you. Um, and if you would like to subscribe, then of course, you'll be able to see all my new videos that come up. Uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.